It's TC Ronan here with Ronan FPV. Welcome to another segment of Ronan Tech. Today's video is part two, installation of the LaForge Fat Shark main and diversity modules. It's been a bit busy at work, so I finally had the chance to sit down and actually do this install. As I mentioned in part one, the unboxing, you can actually purchase the main module on its own. Um, I actually decided to start using that. I'll have more thoughts on that later on. Or you can buy the uh, Pro Diversity Combo where I bought mine at HeliNation.com. That's Heli-Nation.com. A link to their product page is in the description below. Along with using the uh, main module, I also did uh, the upgrade of, from my version 1.5 firmware to the new version 1.6 firmware, which is available now. Uh, that became available when the batch 3 came out. Uh, Shea Ivy uh, does have a tutorial video on how to upgrade the firmware. Uh, I did find one video where he uses a Mac OS. Uh, and then another video where he uses a, a Windows based system but it happened to be Windows 7. My laptop has Windows 10 and I ran into some problems uh, when it was related to the use of the USB ASP AVR programming device. Um, it just I didn't have the drivers on Windows 10 for it to uh, recognize this actual uh, USB card. Uh, it took me quite a while uh, to find the um, the driver and, and get it loaded up. Well, it took me a while actually to figure out um, where to get the driver. Um, so I think I'm going to do a separate video uh, on the firmware upgrade uh, just to go through some of the steps that I had to go through. I'm sure with most people probably using Windows 10 by now, or at least a large percentage of people, uh, they might be running into the same problem it had something to do with uh, Windows 10 not recognizing or acknowledging uh, unsigned certificates or something like that I'll go into more detail when I put that video together um, but uh, so far uh, as I mentioned um, I did start using the the main module and uh, I have to tell you I'm really really happy with it it's a really nice system um, really improved the user experience over the stock system for me some of the things that I really enjoyed about it uh, is the as you can see the OLED display is really nice and clear um, it's got an easy to use and intuitive menu um, which uh, makes it really easy for me uh, and it allows you to quickly identify change and save bands and channels as favorites which is great uh, version 1.5 did have in their menu an auto search uh, and for whatever reason in version 1.6 uh, they no longer have that but what they do have now is the um, spectator mode which does that auto searching for you and then it locks on to um, uh, an available signal or the first available signal and then you just toggle the toggle wheel to uh, to uh, continue the search for the next available signal uh, but all in all uh, it's it's been uh, like I said it was it's a much improved user experience uh, in particular for me because I'm actually been flying with uh, with more people now and uh, before uh, having to <laughs> figure out what channel your transmitter was on and all that other stuff uh, especially when other people are waiting around to uh, get their uh, quads up in the air um, you really want to avoid all of that uh, uh, mixing or overlapping of signals uh, really creates a big problem um, but the cool thing about this uh, main module it is a 40 channel receiver so it does include race band and uh, it is plug and play. It's meant to be a direct replacement for the uh, the stock uh, Fat Shark modules that, that you can purchase. So moving on to the installation of the diversity system in conjunction with the main module, I received a comment or suggestion from Crash RC on the part one unboxing video. 
he asked me to talk about the uh, internal versus external installation uh, as well as what the impact uh, of this these modules would be on the Fat Shark DVR playback. Uh, that's what I gathered from his comments. Um, and talk about the auto scan, which I had mentioned earlier that uh, on the version 1.6 firmware menu, the auto scan is no longer there. Uh, at least I didn't see it. And um, but uh, there is a spectator uh, mode there uh, that looks like it does just about the same thing. Uh, and also uh, what my overall thoughts are, whether I liked the uh, upgrade or not. Uh, I'm actually going to save all of those thoughts uh, and, and opinions for part three after I've had a chance to use the uh, system in its entirety um, for a little while, uh, play around with the menus, see what the additional options are. Without the diversity uh, module installed, there is a diversity menu on there that's actually disabled, but once you connect those, it should open that up. So I haven't actually seen or used uh, anything within that menu. Um, but, uh, you know, for the points that I pointed out uh, earlier, I have to say I'm really, really happy with uh, even just the main module itself. It's really, really improved the user experience for me. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as the internal versus external installation, uh, there's two ways that I've seen it done. Uh, what most people are doing are, are they're going towards the easier installation which is the external and when I say external it means there's a cable that connects the diversity module uh, to the main module um, and what people are doing is they're running it on the outside so uh, as you can see here with the main module I had a 3d printed door made uh, specifically for this I'm really happy with it and it fits well uh, some I guess in the earlier installs, some of the people were taking the diversity module and just using a uh, double-sided stick foam tape and just mounting the module on the outside. Simple. Um, and they would have the wiring uh, or the cable, connecting cable, just run across the front here. Uh, then the next uh, versions that I saw that people were doing is they were actually removing this door here that opens up to the um, head tracking uh, unit area. Uh, they were taking the diversity module and uh, mounting it on the inside um, and then having a 3D printed door uh, uh, made for them and then they would run the cabling on the outside. Uh, the other way that I've seen is people have actually ran the connecting cable uh, on the inside of the Fat Shark goggles. Uh, for myself, having, a, having had a uh, long and extensive manufacturing quality background. Uh, it's just kind of in my nature to want to have things nice and tidy and then also have an extensive technical background uh, taking things apart uh, and putting things back together again, modifying things. Uh, it's really be kind of become something that I love and enjoy doing. So, um, you know, and I watched other people who did the same thing, uh, and it didn't look too difficult. Uh, definitely something within my skill set. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. Uh, but for the main reason for me is I like things nice and tidy. I would love to have that cabling tucked away to look like actually the goggles came that way. Uh, uh, OEM from the factory, you know what I mean? So, um, but uh, so that's going to be uh, how this installation video is going to go. It's going to show the process of me going through that. So why don't we get go ahead and get started with that. So first thing you want to do is uh, remove uh, some of the external pieces like the headband. Uh, definitely take that off. Um, and, you know, obviously the doors, you're going to need to take the doors off. Uh, those of you who have decals on your... Um, on the outside of your goggles. Uh, I took an X-Acto blade and just cut it right down the middle so I didn't have to remove any of the decals. Uh, when I take the upper and lower section apart, um, the decals will stay intact with the uh, section that it's part of. Uh, you'll want to remove your head tracking unit as well as your receiver unit. Uh, you pretty want to just you pretty much want to just break everything down. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is uh, I have a couple more goals that I wanted to achieve by going through this uh, disassembly process. Uh, first and foremost, when I first bought the goggles, I noticed that uh, I was seeing some debris or dust on the screen. Uh, I managed to look past it all this time, but I have to tell you, it was freaking annoying. 
Um, and uh, hopefully once I get these things apart, they'll be a way for me to blow those out uh, and clean those out. I would love to just get that stuff out of my view. Uh, the other thing is, um, after some time, uh, the I used the softer kind of foam piece uh, on the uh, on the eyepiece here, and it already started kind of uh, coming apart. So uh, I want to take the opportunity to remove that and install the the other uh, spare uh, foam piece that I have, um, just to kind of get it back up to you know where uh, how it should be working. So, but. Um, yeah, we'll go ahead and start uh, the actual uh, disassembly of the unit itself. Okay, once you have all your external pieces off, um, also uh, just a reminder to make sure that you take out your micro SD card. You don't really want that in there when you're uh, disassembling your goggles. Um, the first thing you want to do is remove the faceplate and then uh, there are three screws uh, towards the bottom here that you want to take off as well. Okay, so the upper and lower pieces will just uh, snap apart. Um, it is a really tight fit. I mean, that's that's a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Um, but I managed to do it without breaking anything. The one thing that I, I will forewarn you is there are cables that connect the upper and lower part together, and so you want to be very careful of that. So you got the kind of key cable on the right and the left here that connect uh, components on the upper and lower pieces so be careful with that The internal modifications I want to point out is um, I chose to make my slit on the inside on the uh, bottom portion of the goggles. As you can see, I just used a, uh, a pair of uh, dikes and just kind of cut a slit there. And what happens is, is your cabling fits right into that, to that groove there. The other thing I would recommend as well, uh, and it was pointed out in another insta internal installation video, um, is to secure the uh, the cable on the inside. You can use double stick tape. I actually used a, uh, a little dab of uh, rubber cement, and that uh, holds that in place. And that's so when you're actually putting your goggles back together again, that cable doesn't uh, isn't loose in there, getting in between uh, the joints and and where the uh, upper and lower come together, uh, especially uh, with the actual uh, video system, the screen system that you have here. Okay, once you kind of get everything secured and lined up internally, uh, just make sure all your cables and everything are out of the way. Uh, it took a little bit of finagling for me, but as you can see here, um, cable sits uh, exactly where it needs to in reference to uh, where the plug is um, and the uh, main module uh, just uh, inserts right into the the pin headers into the connector and then uh, at this point you have your uh, other end of the cable that's going to connect to the diversity uh, module uh, coming out on the other side um, again just make sure everything's nice and uh, tucked away here uh, also, as you're snapping it together, make extra sure that your IPD adjustments, uh, you can still move those because uh, there is like a mechanical uh, piece in here that connects to the actual um, screens and the screens slide back and forth on a couple of uh, like rod or a rod system there. Uh, but yeah, so uh, as long as you have everything tucked away nice and neat, uh, it should snap right back together uh, without any problems. Uh, next thing you want to do is go ahead and put your screws back in. 
Also, it doesn't hurt to uh, go ahead and test, make sure that um, you're still getting power to uh, the main module here. So let's go ahead and plug this in before we put the screws in and start securing everything again. And it looks like, yeah, we still have uh, power. Everything looks good. And let's take a look and make sure that the screen still have uh, what's going to be that white snow there, but at least they're working. So that doesn't seem like th there's any problems there. Um, so we'll go ahead and start putting the screws in to hold the upper and lower pieces together. And then we'll work on installing the uh, diversity module on this side here. Okay, so I'm uh, done with the install, um, just kind of piecing things together. Uh, but as you can see here, uh, I used a, a double-sided stick tape uh, temporarily now. Uh, just wanted to get it on there. I'll find something a little more permanent down the line, but uh, it actually stays in there pretty well. Um, this is the diversity module installed, the cable or wiring uh, also installed internally connecting to the main module uh, and on the main module I'll be using the VAS Cyclone uh, which has been really a good antenna for me uh, I've got great reception with this thing and with the diversity module I have the uh, 5 dbi uh, team black sheep uh, patch antenna um, for some of the longer distance flying so uh, but I'm going to go ahead and finish putting the rest of everything back together again. Uh, replace the foam padding on the uh, eyepiece or face piece here. And um, I'll be uh, out flying tomorrow and I'll have a chance to test it out. At that point, uh, I'd say maybe a couple weeks or so, I'll you know, run it through its paces. And then do part three, uh, kind of my final thoughts on, uh, on, on the entire system uh, and any improvements. And I'll plan to go through some of the menu options, uh, how it relates to the diversity itself, uh, and then maybe talk a little bit more in depth about um, some of the things that Crash RC had suggested, uh, what my experience is, is uh, using the uh, internal DVR uh, playback system, and uh, just kind of my overall thoughts on the uh, upgrade itself. Uh, but uh, so far, I'm very happy, and I can't wait to get this out in the field tomorrow. Okay, so I now have the finished project. My Fat Shark Dominator V3 goggles have been upgraded with diversity using the LaForge Fat Shark main and diversity modules. Uh, again, as I mentioned before, on the uh, main module I have a circular, right hand circular polarized uh, VAS cyclone. And then on the diversity side, I have the Team Black Sheep. 5dbi patch antenna. Well I hope this video was helpful for any of you that were thinking about either trying this modification uh, with the uh, internal install of the wiring. Um, I would say that the external install is probably significantly easier but i um, actually really happy with the way this turned out. Uh, it's a really clean and nice setup here. Um, but uh, if you were thinking about doing that, hopefully this video did help you out. Uh, please stay tuned for uh, part three where I talk about my final thoughts uh, about the functionality of the upgrade and uh, how, it's imp how it uh, hopefully would improve my experience as an end user uh, in FPV. So please like the video and subscribe to our channel. That'll let us know if we're going in the right direction. And we always welcome any feedback or suggestions.